Triple Crown here, February 24th, 2024. This is before I head over to Topps Rip Night over at Cardstock. So I decided to start off my Saturday morning with a trip about an hour plus north to the Troy, Ohio Sports Card Show. It's a two-day show held quarterly up that way. And I was set up last time but decided just to walk around this time on Saturday there were a few larger buyers there who beat me to a lot of the things that I had liked to have gone after. And usually when that happens, it's my cue to go into the value boxes and start digging. And sure enough, I had some pretty good success going through the value boxes. It's really one of my favorite things to do at shows. You never know exactly what you're going to find. I get asked sometimes, what are you looking for when you go into a value box? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. It's not really something that I can put into words, but generally speaking, I can kind of thumb through fast like I'm doing here. I know the sets and I know when I see something that looks a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing, and that is when I'm gonna take the time to go a little bit slower, make sure I'm not missing something, and to go after it. What am I exactly looking for? Well, it's twofold. First part is I'm looking for things for my sets, right? The blue ice set or the blue refractor set, more likely than not, though, what I'm looking for is something unusual, something that's going to pique my interest, something that I can pull out. With this particular dealer's value boxes, I have gone through them before. It looks like they're pretty well updated, but I had left behind two MVP buybacks last time. This is a dealer from my last card show of 2023 vlog. So really here, I'm hoping to go ahead and grab that. You see, one of the cards I set aside is that Kenneth Murray Auto number to 25. He's got a $2 price sticker on it. I mean, a rookie auto out of 25 from a product like Playbook. I'll take a flyer on that. That's a lot of what the value boxes are for me, is taking a flyer on some cheap cards. Unfortunately, my audio is not the best on this particular clip. It sounds like, as our friend Snoop would say, I'm talking through a funnel or a jug. And for that reason, let's hit the music, fast forward through my digging, and then we'll talk about what I dug out and built in my stack with this particular dealer. Time to reconvene. Here is my stack here. I pulled out two of those buybacks and then this Burrow Rockin' Emoji second year optic card here, along with two cards in this dealer's showcase. He had this Jacob deGrom auto at $20, which I thought was incredibly cheap for a Tops Now auto. Most of those you buy from Tops, you're probably paying at least $100 for this blue parallel that's number to 49 and that's for your really low tier players. I remember some of the Miggy ones I used to chase back in the day were think minimum 200 probably closer to 250 and they would sell out near instantly it felt like even sometimes before it got to the public i buy this uh, jacob de Gram auto the brown razzle dazzle and the two buybacks with the ever value box cards for 110 very pleased with that price you ever hear the old adage everything happens for a reason well i kind of felt that way stumbling upon these next two cards these were from a value box that I was just digging through. I didn't even bother recording this clip because I wanted to record the interaction I was gonna have with the next dealer you're gonna see. But I end up fighting these two cards for a combined five dollars. First up, one of my all-time favorites, Megatron Hot Rookie Score Select, number to 749. This one, pretty good deal on. And then the second one, this Kevin Durant card. Used to be known as a Sunburst, now known as a Checkerboard tougher parallel to hit in retail version of optic 
Again, $5 for the pair on these two will gladly take that. Definitely a, a morale booster as well, uh, finding some good value box cards. All right, I move over to this dealer who had a few things I was interested in as I watched him kind of set up earlier on. Uh, we got to this show incredibly early, so I wanted to make sure he had enough time to set up, but I also wanted to make sure I got there before he got picked over. And after bowling over two of his cards in his showcases, I decide to go through his value boxes. Now I do something here that I normally never do. When the dealer tells me that his value boxes are various prices, I almost always will walk away. But he has some decent stuff in here and I'm gonna see where he's at. Why do I do that? Well, what I pull out is really gonna depend on what price you have it at. If this is a $5 box, I'm gonna treat it a lot differently than a two for five box or a dollar box or a 50 cent box. Again, it really just depends on price point because certain things I'll buy at 50 cents all day long. This stack here though, a little bit uh, of a mystery. So I'm gonna see where he's at on these. Hopefully it's a number that I can work with. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Interesting your prices on this. Hey, man. You're welcome. You. No problem. So for the next minute here, he's kind of going over these in his head, and I have a feeling what he's going to do is give me a price on the stack, which is not ideally what I'm hoping for here. Um, I mean, of course I would like a discounted price on the stack, but I also kind of want to know what the individual prices are on the cards, because as I alluded to earlier, if something's $5, I might be a lot more eager to pick it up as opposed to $10. You might say, well, what's the big difference between five and $10? Well, it adds up and maybe there's a different card that I would want or something else that I could exclude. When it's not priced explicitly, it's really difficult to tell kind of what the dealer is trying to get out of it. So if he comes back at me with a stack price, what I'm gonna do is have him break it down and then that way I can eliminate things that maybe I don't necessarily want for his price and work out a deal on the rest as well as the cards in his showcase that I may want. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to what he ends up telling me. Do a hundred for that. Yeah, it's kind of like how you broke it down because there might be some that I don't want depending on the price point. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, Are you gonna tell you yes or no if you just wanna go for it? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I, I went, I kind of added them up and then took, took some of them off, so. I got you. Yeah. So it was like 25, five. That's fine on this. 10. That's cool. Um, 15, 15, 10, um, that was 20, 5, and I think 10 for that. So 20, 5, and 10 here, so yeah. I'll take these three out, just, I'll just take those in. Alright, so that was, what did we say, 20, 30, 40, 55, We're losing my range, 70, 80. So, yeah. And then that's that. I got 80 there, so 70 bucks. Okay. Is this to a number to 20, I think? I was trying to see what oh, it was. Oh, you know what? I don't remember. I've had it for so long. Yep. I gotcha. So is it 70 on that stack? How are you? If you want, if you want for seventy, I'll throw that in there. Sure, that's cool. All right. I'm gonna be very thankful in hindsight that he ended up adding in that top card. More on that in a little bit. But now the goal is to bundle that stack together with the Tua card and then this Jordan Walker from Topps Chrome Cosmic over there in the left case. Ideally, I'm going to pay full sticker on those two cards in order to get my value box stack of $70 for free. I think he's already priced perhaps a tad low on those two cards, and I know that the value box stuff is good stuff. So hopefully that works out and I get this deal done. At 225 I'll yeah, definitely I understand. I'm interested in that one and your Jordan Walker Blue Moon. Yeah. I've been on a Cosmic kick lately. I love Cosmic, man. I sent in um, a bunch. Um, just to do 350 for the whole stack. 350. Sure. Right. Appreciate it. Yep. 
It doesn't always work out how you draw it up in your head. In fact, it rarely does, but it is nice when it does happen. And we get this deal done at 350. Now I'll break this down a little bit and show you. Here is the Jordan Walker sales. These are all in the off season. He's a guy who I think could be a sneaky name compared to what his values were prior to his debut. He's one of those guys who I feel like got lost in the shuffle last year. And that's one of my favorite things to do is to target some guys who the hobby hypes up to unrealistic expectations. They fall short of those expectations and then get them on the rebound. I want to break down some of the cards I found in the value box here and show you a little bit on how I ended up doing on those cards because I think that's part of the fun here. And those are really where the biggest gains are going to be made on the steal. Let's start off with what was the throw-in card in the steal, the Jalen Phillips Press Proof. And quite frankly, this card, I wasn't sure how tough these are. I usually have brakes on in the background just to kind of listen to his background noise while I'm working, doing whatever it may be. And I think I've only seen one or two of these pulled out of all the Prism Hobby box openings that I have seen. So at $5... I probably should have grabbed it anyways, but him throwing it into my stack for basically free was definitely good. Let's say that I paid $5 for it anyways. I definitely think it was worthwhile taking a look at the first couple sales onto it. If I, Even if I get 15 bucks for it, that's 3xing my money. So gladly we'll take that one. Looking at the Matt Ryan, I like Prism Vet Autos, especially of guys I think are underappreciated, such as Ryan. This is one that I ended up moving a couple days later in a bulk deal, I guess you could say, if someone had bought four cards for me, if I'm not mistaken. This was one of them. It was valued out at 15 in that deal. I purchased it here for 10 So going from 10 to 15 not too bad. For this Kenneth Walker, I figured I bought this for 20 rather than 25 since the dealer gave me a discount on my stack. And then I sold it for 25 later on that night at the Tops Rip Night. So going from 20 to 25 is not great, but then again, I only had it for a few hours. So that's not too bad. Last but not least is my favorite card from this value box stack. It's the Willie Mays Rainbow Foil. These are numbered to 25. He had this one valued at 15. That's how I put it into my spreadsheet. I think that's kind of on the low end. There's only one sale of this card ever. It was for $40, but that was in April 2023. So I'm going to be relying on my gut for this one. And my gut tells me, based on what I have seen and sold various stadium club foil boards for, that this one is on the low end, if not below the low end, at $15. So I went ahead and picked it up. We'll see how I end up doing with this one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next deals in the show. Rex, you probably won't even find many of them sold. I'm not concerned about that at $5. I'll tell you, it's not. I won't break the bank. I'll say, I got one that's also numbered, but I don't know if I brought it with me today. Did you see any of those in there? Of him? Yeah. No, I don't think I did. Can't recall nothing that jumped out. I don't think out. I did. I, I think I an Alfonso Soriano Rookie Year Refractor PSA 9 is a card that I'll pick up for $5 any day of the week. I just think it's really cool, even if I have to hold it till the end of time, which didn't end up happening, but even if I had to, I would uh, I'd gladly do that. I've spent $5 in worse ways for sure. Now, this Adrian Peterson is the most perplexing card of this deal for me because, as you'll notice, it's a PSA 10. You know how I feel about the 10 tax, but rules are made to be broken. What I'm trying to do is see what is the population on this. How many of these have been graded and how many of them are tens? Now, is anybody out there really clamoring and must have a 10 on a fourth year black refractor? No, but I also do really value some of these older numbered refractors being in this good of condition, especially in a 10, because most of the ones that I come across raw are scratched up. They're banged up, and they're not slabbed for a very good reason more often than not, unfortunately. They just weren't as taken care of back then as they would be now. It seems like everything that's numbered these days immediately gets put into a sleeve, and for a lot of people, a sleeve and a top loader straight out of the pack. So I'm trying to figure out in my head, what do I think this card is realistically worth? I don't think that any multiplier is really going to apply here. This is one that is gut feeling. He has it at 100 but he's going to talk himself down here to where he realistically thinks it's worth. I'm asking Justin for his opinion here as well. He values it a little bit more than I do. But let's see what the group comes up with. It's, 
It's very small. I think it's almost like six. Six? Three. Three. Yeah, it's small. All right, it just went up. <laughs> 75. I'll talk myself <laughs> up. So what, the nine sell for 15? Yeah. And what do you want for all these? Seven. Seven so on all those. Let's see, there's something else in here. I try to make a little bit of it. Right. Yeah, I, I'll move that stuff over there. Once, once these guys are done, yeah. I'll, I'll move them. Probably 120 for the pair, or 120 for the lot would be pretty good. That's pretty much what he's offering. You guys do any buying a trade today? Or I would at least take a look, yeah. Because he said 70 on those, so he said, he said 65, so 135 on those. Pretty close. We'd be pretty close at that number. This guy's 115, probably. It's his, yeah. Time. Off camera, the dealer had told me that he would come down to 65 on that Adrian Peterson. I fought it over very carefully. What did I think I could get for this card? Well, I figured I would put it out at 60 and try to get 50 for it. Realistically, I think I'd probably end up settling at 40. So my goal here would be to, at best, or I should say at worst, try to break even and acquire this for $40. I highly doubt he's going to come off that much more just because of how tough it is to grab this car and the likelihood that a deal gets done probably pretty slim and sure enough we don't end up coming to an agreement on the price. He's pretty firm at that 135 number which is fair and I think to the right person that Adrian Peterson uh, could be sold for 65 maybe even 75 if you find the right AP collector but it's a really cool card. I got to think with my head over my heart, unfortunately, with this one. I end up passing on it. The good news is, though, on that Alfonso Soriano card that you see here that I picked up for $5, I figured that'd be a fun little eBay card that I'd just throw up there. I'd put it up, I think, at like 25 bucks or something and see what people would offer on it. Well, it ended up selling within about a day or two for 18 Once you take out fees and everything, it's probably closer to 16 so... Considering it was $5, ended up pretty much 3xing on that one, which was really uh, a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting that when I grabbed that card. I really only grabbed it because I thought it was cool. I didn't do any research on it. You know, $5, why not, right? But that's what ends up happening. I did end up buying the Larry Walker and Devonta Smith autos. Those, we'll see how they end up panning out. But uh, that is going to do it for me on this video here. I figured I'd show a little bit of a different side going through some of the value boxes I usually just kind of skim through those parts of the previous videos, but I wanted to do a more in-depth analysis of them. If you want to see more value box content, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see me keep doing something else, let me know as well. I'm always open to comments, criticisms, suggestive feedback, whatever the case may be. Until next time, take care, stay safe, be kind.